<coughs> Disclaimer. The information provided to you in this video course is for educational work only. It teaches you how to work with Linux and some security tools from the information technology. The author is not responsible for the way you use this information. The information provided to you has an educational objective to impart knowledge to everybody who is interested in Linux. Persons who want to use the shown knowledge to harm other people are unwanted and it is forbidden to them to watch this video course. At first I want to give you a short overview about this course. We start with the basics of Linux and then we will learn how to use files and directories. After we are able to handle the Linux basic commands it is time to go deeper into the system and network areas of Linux. Then you will learn how to use the shell and shell scripts. After that we will take a look at the toolkits of Backtrack 5 and also on the configuration files of the Linux system. Last of all we will take a look at demons and how they work. I hope you will enjoy this video course and learn something useful. Welcome to part 2 of this video course. First of all I will show you an example of that, what I will not show you in this course, because it can be done by everyone who owns a computer mouse. You open Nautilus under the Genome Desktop, by clicking with your left mouse button. After Nautilus appears you click on the right button, create a folder, give the folder a name, click right on the folder, then select the item properties from the drop down menu, then you click on permissions and change something you like or want to change, after all you click on close. OK. You know now how to handle the desktop and Nautilus. One last click, take your mouse and click on the right button over the folder you have created, select now rename and give the folder another name, OK. Well done, and now delete the folder by right clicking on it, and select the option move to trash. That's it. That's exactly the stuff you want learn in this course, you will do all this action on the command prompt, known as the Linux shell, so let's go. You know the list command from part 1 of the course, so type now ls-l, to list up the content of your current directory. Your current directory seems to be quite empty, so let's change this, let's create some folders. Now type in the command make directory known by Linux as mkd, space folder 1 space folder 2, this command will create two folders. To see if your folders have been created, type ls-l to list up the current directory. You should see now two folders, folder 1 and folder 2. Now it is time for some theoretical stuff. Just imagine that the first three lines are some output you get from the shell. You have this cryptic information and don't know what it means or if it's useful. Let's get it on to decrypt this information. The first character is always a D or a minus char. The char D stands for directory and the minus char stands there if it is a file. The next are three blocks of read, write, and execute, I colored, read to red, write to yellow, and execute to blue. There is always a block of three sequence blocks of read, write, and execute. The first block belongs to the user, the second belongs to the group, and the last block belongs to others. That means to everybody who is not a user or a group. Then you have there two times root root. What does this mean? This means that the file belongs to the owner root, which is the first block and to the group root, which is the second block. It is important to understand how the rights management works under Linux. Only if you understand this, you are able to set permissions to a file or a directory. I told you now in a few short sentences how the rights management under Linux works, 
and hope that you can understand it. If you want more information, search for it on the internet, that might help you to understand some things better, maybe better than I could explain it to you. Let's get back to our two folders that we created. You are still on the terminal, and you see the two folders you have created so far. Now you learn the command to change permission of the file. This is exactly the stuff you did on Nautilus with your computer mouse, but now we do it on the shell. Type in chmod minus minus help to see how to use the command. There are two ways to use the chmod command, the first one is the symbolic mode, and the second one is the octal mode. To get more knowledge about these possibilities, take a look at the manual pages. Now let's see an example. You are on the terminal windows, clear the screen with clear, and then type in ls minus the option L to list all the items in your current home directory. You see the folder 1 and 2 with their permissions. Now type in chmod space u for user minus r w x space folder 1 and then hit enter. You type now ls minus the option L and see that your folder 1 don't have the three permission attributes after the D, the R, W, X are no longer there because you took them away. In the next step type in chmod space G, O, minus R, W, X space folder 1 and then watch it again with ls minus L your folder 1 has now no permissions. If you now try to enter to the folder with the change directory command you have learned on part 1 of this course, you would enter the folder. Because you are logged in as the root user, a normal user now would not be able to enter this directory. But this just by the way, we are still on the permission topic. You see the permission attributes of your folder, and now it is time to change that. Type chmod space u g o equals r w x r w x r w x space folder 1 and hit enter to see if this action was successful type ls minus l and take a look on the permission attributes now your folder 1 has all permissions but that is bad under linux because in some cases it is a security risk not only you and the group to which the folder 1 belongs can see what's inside it, also everybody who has access to your system can see what is in the folder, everyone can delete the folder. Rename it and do whatever they want with it. To change this, you will now learn to use the octal mode of the command. It is also possible to work with the symbolic mode of chmod, with plus and minus to add or remove permissions, but you should be able to use the octal mode as good as the mode I show you until now. Let's clear the screen, type in clear, then type ls minus l, to see the current state of folder 1. Type chmod space 700, space folder 1 and hit enter. Now watch it again with ls minus l, do you see what has happened? Yes, only the user has permission attributes, neither the group or others have any permission attributes. To learn more about how to use the octal mode, take a look at the man pages of the chmod command. To give you a better understanding of the octal mode, let's take a look at a table that I created for you. In the octal system you have 8 chars, the octal system works like the binary system with 0 and 1, but with 8 chars instead of 2. The octal mode of the chma command, bases on this 8 chars. You have the chars 0 till 7, so 8 chars as a whole. Let's start with 0, the number 0 tells the system, that it has no permission or right and therefore you have no attributes. To understand this system you need to know that the value of the read attribute is 4, the value of the write attribute is 2, and the value of the execute attribute is 1, 
so the sum of all attributes is 7. If you have all attributes set you always have the number 7 standing there. All attributes can be combined, e.g. if you combine right with the value of 2, and execute with the value of 1, then you get the sum of 3, that means that 3 is the value of right plus execute. If you look at this table over, and over again you will understand the system very quickly. You also can press pause to watch the table in a short break. And I tell you, that it is awesome stuff if you once figured it out how it works. Just by the way, there is also a command named, change owner. The command change owner can change the user, or the group of the file or directory. You need this command if you want to share some files, or directories with an other user or group on your system, or if you want to transfer the file or directory to this other user or group. Just type shown, space, the name of the new user, the file should belong to, colon, the name of the new group, the file should belong to, space, and then the file or directory name, this is an useful command. I recommend you to take a look at the manual pages of the change owner command. Back to our main topic, files and directories, and how to manage them. Let's open the terminal window, type in cd, to enter to your home directory, then type ls-l, to list all visible items in your directory. You still got the folder 1 and the folder 2 in your home directory, now you learn how to delete a directory, and how to move, and rename it. The first thing we will do, is to move folder 1 into folder 2. For this purpose, we type in the shell the command mv for move, followed by space, folder 1, space, folder 2, and then we hit enter. After that we type the list command, so type ls minus the option l, and see what now the output tells you. Right. The folder 1 has disappeared. Guess where it is now? Right. It is in the folder 2, type cd space folder 2, to enter into the folder 2, then type ls, and you should see the folder 1. Now we will delete this folder. The command to delete something is rm, that stands for remove, so type in rm, space, folder 1, and hit enter, oh, no, it cannot be removed, do you see the output? Why, can it not be removed? I tell you why, because it is a directory. To remove a directory, you need the option minus uppercase R, so type now, RM, space, minus uppercase R, space folder 1, and hit enter, type LS to check the output, and you will see, that the folder 1 has disappeared. Now type cd, space, dot dot, to go into the parent directory. Type ls and look at the output, you have now only folder 2 standing there alone. Let's change its name, to do this you need once again the move command. Type mv, space, folder 2, space, test, and hit enter. Now type ls, you should see now a directory called test if nothing went wrong. In that way you could move and rename directories or files. Because we don't need this folder anymore, we will delete it now. Type rm, space, minus uppercase r, space, test, and hit enter. That's it for the moment, in this short example you have learned how to move or remove files and directories, you learned how to rename them. And if you want to know more about this then use the Linux help system. There exist much more commands to work with files and directories, but we don't have the time to get them all into this video course. I recommend you to buy a book, which shows you all the Linux commands and how they work. That is the best way to learn something in depth. You have also the possibility, to search for more information on the internet. I will show you more commands in the following videos, the first time I will use new commands I will explain them to you.
I hope you enjoyed this short video course about managing files and directories and I hope you will watch the next course video about system and network topics of the Linux system. Thanks for watching. Love the beat, control you.